If you could make sure the old workshop there is still in one piece, anyone would decide to... Alright, so Fallout, the show. Was it good? Was it bad? I would say it's pretty enjoyable. Uh, it's not like the best work of fiction in reality, but like, it gets it gets the job done of entertaining. But before I go forward, there's no spoilers. I am not going to give spoilers because when I did my One Piece review, that was like a uh, decent weeks after. This one is, uh, well, I think a week now, so still pr pretty fresh so i don't i don't want to like drop like massive spoilers but yeah i like what they did overall with the entire series the story de definitely feels like something ripped out of fallout there is some issue with uh, like new vegas fans like hey this like completely retcons it and someone who's a big fan of, of new vegas ah uh, i don't know i'm i'm willing to give it like all right, fine. I, overall, I mean, I enjoyed the entire show because, well, it definitely felt like I'm watching someone do their playthrough, you know, of like Fallout 3, New Vegas, or 4. And what I also like is that the three main characters of the series, they each represent a different part of the Fallout lore, and I could respect it. Like, you have the main character who's this vault dweller naive coming out seeing the wasteland for the first time definitely screams fallouts one through four it, it has the same element of that then you have the ghoul who's pretty much the the representative of new vegas because in new vegas you pretty much play like this cowboy courier type going around being this bounty hunter and whatnot but then you also have the third main character who's a part of the Brotherhood of Steel, which of course is from the spin-off series Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, which I'm gonna be honest, never played, and I don't know anyone, even the most diehard Fallout fans who played it, so. Regardless, for those who don't know what Fallout is, it is an RPG that's been around uh, for 20 years now, so that's, around the time that Todd Howard probably sold Skyrim to dinosaurs and aliens. That man, nothing will stop him. He will get Skyrim projected in your cyber eyes in the future. Mark my words. But regardless of that, yeah, it's a pretty fun game. <laughs> that seems like an understatement. Some people are a bit uh, mixed about Fallout 4. I personally, yeah, I would say it's not the best fallout game because your choices really don't branch out as much as in new vegas as well as fallout 3 new vegas is up there top 10 uh you have this amazing plot and uh, i'm you know what i'm not gonna go glazing new vegas this is about the show <laughs> but you get the idea this is an rpg game post-apocalyptic settings got it moving on now Speaking of all that, the Fallout TV show has pretty big radioactive shoes to fill. How are you going to take a game that's all about branching storylines, going through all these elements of side quests, and then the fact that the main character isn't a solid base. It, it, the main character could be anyone. So how do you deal with that? Well, you tell your own side story within that universe. Why couldn't Halo be like this, man? Like, uh... It bugs me. It bugs me so much that Master Chief doesn't know how to put his goddamn helmet on at all times. Someone please duct tape or glue that helmet on him. I, I get it. They want to show his face. Fine. Just do it a little bit. You, you, you don't have to take the helmet every episode, man. And there's certain parts of the show where he just takes off the whole armor and, you know does activities that's why they call him master cheeks not master chief because guys he doesn't <sighs> like the if i take the halo show as a sci-fi show and not a part of the halo show sure it, it passes as decent entertainment but when you think of halo the entire franchise and how they just whooped did nothing with that all that lore is kind of sad but fallout the show does not have, seem to have that problem it sticks to the lore sticks to easter eggs sticks to it's just telling a side story within that world making you feel interested in it newcomers won't feel bogged down about oh i don't know this lore that lore because they're being told 
as it goes. And for Fallout fans, they get a treat. They get to see a new story within the world that they enjoyed. <sighs> I mean, Last of Us did it. Fallout has not done it. If Borderlands somehow does it, the movie, I am really going to be sad. Because Halo deserved a lot more better treatment here, man. So, the production value. Top notch. They really went all out with the effects. The costumes definitely scream something you would find in a Fallout universe. Uh, the vaults, masterly crafted. They have all the... The feeling is there. Definitely there. The monsters, the mutants, everything is... I was kind of afraid that they would tone down like the weirdness and the violence and just the peculiarness of it all. Nope, they went all in, especially for those who have seen this. It's not really a spoiler, but there's a scene where this giant, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Axeloid? The, 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 the thing that Mudkip is inspired by is chasing someone, trying to eat them. And when he's trying to eat them, it does a close up of the inside of its tongue. And instead of like taste buds or whatever, it's like fingers, like human fingers. And I was like, Ugh, that's um hmm <laughs> I, I i don't know how to process that information they actually went full on with the violence to make it seem like yep this is a wasteland where there are cannibals there are raiders is not a safe place at all beginning was really well done middle at the very middle end kind of getting bogged down not too much but like just a little and then the ending was good so overall yeah a, a pretty fun show to watch what's also fun is that the cast of characters all are a bunch of big names i say big names because i don't know if i could pronounce them well but i'm gonna try so for starters walton goggins the guy who plays the ghoul i've seen him in many shows uh He's just that guy that you've seen him everywhere, but if you told me what I've seen him in, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but like, I've seen him in many like villain type roles, so there's that. How do you pronounce that? Moses? Is it Moses? I, Moses? Moses? He's from Hannah Montana. I think he's from Hannah Montana. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there it is. Hannah Montana, as well as Nacho Libre. So, and Wizards of Wayward Place, huh? interesting the rest is i'm not i haven't seen them well i i would say for ella the main character i thought i didn't see her but apparently i have been uh, acquainted with her work before which is arcane she is the voice of jinx so this is two for two a good video game adaption so maybe future video game adaption should just hire her she'll she'll just play the doom slayer get a good doom movie maybe i mean it's better than what we got uh the, the rock uh, pretty much high on steroids beating uh, the other dude to death that was what we got no demons no hell just super powered rock great and probably the only time you'll see the rock lose on the big screen because his contract after that you'll never see him lose again <laughs> The same thing with One Piece. The One Piece show thrived because they had Ichiro Oda, the main manga artist, on the set, as well as producers and actors who enjoyed the manga themselves. Same thing here, and we see the results. That and Todd Howard was on set, constantly trying to probably sell each of the actors a copy of Skyrim. I know that joke is being to death, but like the man, the man had convinced me. I was in. I was a stupid child. I bought Skyrim for every console growing up. This man m convinced me, man. I, like, I first got it for Xbox for free, like, growing up uh, by, I think it was an older cousin. I get most of my stuff from older cousins, hand-me-downs. But then I grew up, I saw it on the PlayStation 4. I was like, you know what? As a teen, I'm going to buy this for myself on my PS4. Great. Um... It, it, it was all right, but then I was like, you know what? I want it portable. I'll buy it on the Switch as a birthday gift for myself. Did that. And then I got it on Steam for sale. I'm like, god damn it. I could probably build a house with all the copies of Skyrim I'll buy now and whatever is in the future. But yeah, going more into detail with the characters without spoiling it, I feel like each one gives a nice perspective of interacting with the 
Fallout universe. One is like a stand-in for newcomers to the series to like grow into it. Like literally leaving the vault, you're greeted with an alien world. And you could go, go through that with the main uh, character here, the Vault Dweller. Then you have the Ghoul, who's for pretty much the veteran fans, like giving that whole experience of what it's like to be walking into a raider camp and just blowing everything up and just beating down everything. That's for us, uh, the fans, to feel that empowering feeling. Uh, and then you have the Brother of Steel. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying his characters. I actually liked his character a lot, uh, especially when he's in the vault uh, talking about oysters. Whenever you get to that scene, <laughs> pretty awkward but funny in, in its own way. So I, I would definitely say the characters, especially the main characters, are likable. Mm. And uh, yeah, I hope Borderlands can emulate some of this, but. But the thing is, Fallout isn't just comedy and action, it definitely, the stories in the game, really makes you think about war, the human condition, how people adapt and survive in like very harsh environments, whether that's mentally, physically. That is touched upon within the story as well. So I do appreciate they didn't go full on Marvel writing and just be like comedy, comedy, action, action. They do have some elements. Uh, I hope for season two, they could lean more into that. Uh, but we'll see, we'll, we'll see. It's very promising. This, this is how I felt like when I watched the Sonic movie, the first one, that uh, they have a good foundation here. They just need to build upon it and put in more Easter eggs, work with the lore a bit more. Please just uh, don't go the Halo route or the Witcher route. Just stay true to the story. Make an entertaining story for people to enjoy and you'll go far. But yeah, that's my two caps on <laughs> the entire show. Uh, Please let me know what you think of it. I'm open to listen to whatever criticisms. Oh yeah, before I forget, the, the music. They actually got the main theme of Fallout. <sighs> that that was lovely. I kind of wish they did it during the nuke scene, uh, which is the very beginning. That's not spoilers. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently nukes are used in Fallout. Big spoiler, by the way. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. It can't be. That's the whole premise of the show. But uh, yeah, so I'm really glad they did that and... That's all there is.